In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through an online game that I played the other day where my opponent's king went on quite the journey and I thought you guys would enjoy it. So let's just get straight into this. It's three minute blitz. This is Lee Chess rating, so they're a little bit inflated, but I mean, it's still like 2,100 equivalent on chess.com for reference. So <clears throat> my opponent op opens with d4 which I played knight f6, king's indian, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7. And typically the move here is e4, just to take more central space. But my opponent goes for bishop g5. And in a lot of cases after h6, black wants to take, sorry, white wants to take. So I just castle. He goes queen d2. And I can no longer play h6 because he's got two attackers to my one defender. The queen supports the bishop. I go d6. And then my opponent queenside castles. I go c5. Which is why d6 was played to challenge the center. Now if my opponent takes. Like this. I can't take back. Right? I'm most likely going to play queen a5. Because if I take back then. I, I go down a rook. Right? Um, and I'm probably going to go queen a5 here. And apply a lot of pressure on the queen side because with c5 and c takes and d takes c5 my bishop gets to open up which is kind of the point um but he plays d5 instead and here i play the best move in the position this is a really interesting move so i'd encourage you to try and pause the video and find it for yourself it's not particularly obvious but positionally it's really important to try and understand these concepts. So I'll give you a second. So the best move here is pawn to b5. Sacrificing the pawn in two different ways, right? In the game, my opponent plays knight takes b5. But if c takes b5, you play the move a6. Which is really typical in the Benko Gambit. Which is a gambit... At the very start of the game, which oh, how does it go? <laughs> I'm I'm kind of getting it a bit wrong here, but it's basically this isn't going to be ex the exact right move order, but it's basically like this, right? That's kind of the idea, and Black gets a surprising amount of play on the queen side, right? The computer doesn't even mind this line, which is apparently the Pyrenees gambit, <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, a chess opening named after a mountain range. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, that's that's what happens if C takes B5, right? And we just open up all the lines on the queen side. But the opponent goes for knight takes B5. And the reason this is bad is because I get knight E4. Forking the queen and the bishop. And why is it minus 2? How is that so bad? Obviously he's got to move the queen. And now I take take. And why is it minus 2.7? I'm literally down a pawn. It's because of this bishop. This bishop with the uh, white dark squared bishop off the board. Nobody can oppose it. And white's pawns are positioned in such a way that white can't like put a pawn on c3 or d4 to shut off the bishop's scope. White's already committed to castling queenside, so, you know, his king is under constant threat. And the great thing is my pawns as well, which controlling the key squares that white might use to blockade the bishop's diagonal. So, it's a really interesting positional concept where I go down a pawn. My bishop is just, it's, it's, it's worth like five points. It's just that good. Here I go h6. Just kicking the queen out. I want to see where it goes. It goes queen d2. I played bishop f5, which the computer doesn't like. And I'm kind of baiting f3 and e4. Because in my head, um, I wanted to do that because it would put all his pawns on light squares. I mean that my dark squared bishop would be completely unopposed. He does go f3 with the intention of going e4 to because currently my bishops are absolute gods 
so he needs to cut this light squared bishop off. I go knight a6, e4, bishop comes back. Maybe I'm threatening to take the knight. He goes h4, trying to launch a kingside attack, but there's not there's just not really that much on the king side. Especially with how fast my attack comes. So I go knight b4, threatening knight takes a2 check. He goes a3. And here I go a6. So I counterattack his knight. He takes on d6, which is a desperado. Because he's going to lose his knight anyway. And my knight is under attack. So I take it. He takes my knight. I take back. He plays queen takes. And here, I am down two pawns. But... This bishop is just so good, and his king is so open. Like, my rooks are going to come to these files, potentially. My pawn might go down the board. My queen's got easy access. And this bishop, it does have a root in at some point, right? So my pieces are just a much higher quality. I go rook b8, and I sacrifice a third pawn, and then take... Because, you know, I'm, I'm down three pawns, just straight up. Straight up down three pawns, but the attack is so strong. I take on b2 of check. King d2. Queen a5, check. Now it's really difficult for white here. He can't go to c2, because after queen c3 there's a mate coming. If he, go if he goes to e2, which is not what he played in the game, but I was going to play bishop a4 to attack the rook. And at some point I can maybe get this bishop out and get my other rook in. But he goes to e3. I play bishop a4, attacking the rook. And I kind of want to try to force it off of the back rank so that I can play bishop here. Oh my god, bishop here. Or get my queen in. He goes to d3. And then I attack the rook again. Because, I mean, I might as well, right? I'd also like the rook to move because I then could play um, rook to b3 check at some point. And he runs. He just legs it. <laughs> so the king has taken quite the march all the way to f4. While these pieces are sitting here doing absolutely nothing. I go queen e1, which is, I believe, the best move? One of them, anyway. My point is, the reason I played this is to cut off the g3 square so that the king can't run back there. And I'm also just straight up attacking his bishop. Like, his bishop is hanging. He plays bishop e2 so that his bishop is defended by the knight. I play bishop c1 check. Just, you know, giving the king another check. If there's something like king g4... I mean, I can throw in h5 check, I can just take the bishop. Like, it's completely winning, obviously. Uh, my opponent goes to e5. For whatever reason. So I go queen g3 check. And... My opponent is out of options. Because his king can go to f6. Or he can go to <clears throat> d4. I mean f6 is mating 1, d4, I'm just winning the queen, and f4, I can just take it and we have exactly the same thing where I just win the queen. So after queen g3, uh, king f, no sorry, after queen g3 my opponent resigns. Um, but it's just hilarious that his king ends up on e5. And you know, white is up a good amount of pawns. But they can't do anything against my dark squared bishop. Like, it's just absolutely unbelievably strong. And, you know, at this point I go down three pawns, but his king is just too weak. I can transfer all my pieces, like, literally, just behind white's lines. I can just get them all behind White's lines and there's nothing he can do about it. Um, 
it's yeah a pretty pretty crushing game against quite a good opponent and the game was really won and lost here i i effectively won the game here because white simply can't do anything about this bishop that's how strong the king's indian bishop can be sometimes guys it is it is a monster absolute monster but anyway i hope you enjoyed hope you learned something if you stuck around till the end please uh drop a like and subscribe i'll be posting every day for the foreseeable future so yeah have a good one